my freedom, I'll keep my guns. Try to keep my money and my religion too. Try to keep on working, try to keep on smiling. I will keep my Christian name and y'all can keep the National Rifle Association here today in opposition to Senate Bill 5444, 5992, and 6049. Semi-automatic firearms are some of the most commonly owned firearms in the United States and are used for the very same purposes as other firearms, for self-defense, home protection, hunting, recreational, and competitive shooting. Despite being some of the most commonly owned, semi-automatic firearms are only used in a very small percent of violent crime. Police reports and studies have found these so-called assault weapons are only used in 1-2% to 2 of violent crimes. Looking at five years of recent data, there are nine times as many murders with knives, blunt objects, and hands, as, hands and feet as there are with rifles of any type, yet semi-automatic rifles remain the target of assault weapons legislation. Here in Washington, according to data from the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs, rifles of any kind are only used in roughly 3% of violent crimes in the state, with semi-automatic rifles being just a small subset of that percentage. The same goes for commonly owned standard capacity magazines. A standard manufacturer supplied magazine generally holds more than 10 rounds. These so-called large capacity magazines make up about half of all of magazines <coughs> owned in the United States. Following the magazine ban at the federal level, a congressional study found that the 10 round limit on magazines had no impact on crime and it did not have an effect on multiple victim crimes. Treating semi-automatic firearms and standard capacity magazines differently under the state law will do nothing to impact crime in the state, but will only limit law-abiding gun owners and their ability to utilize them for self-defense purposes. Thank you. When I was shot by a juvenile felon in 1993 who obtained his firearm illegally, even though there already were many strict gun control laws in existence, and they didn't prevent my murder. Since that time, and I am certain long before there was an anti-gun agenda conducted by politicians and anti-gun groups seeking to limit our Second Amendment right to bear arms. Sometimes they were successful in passing anti-gun laws that purported to make us all safer from being shot or injured, when in reality, they only infringed upon and hampered the constitutional rights of law-abiding citizens. Did my murderer adhere to any of the many gun control laws on the books in 1993? Did they protect me from him? Did they protect me from being murdered? The emphatic answer to all those questions is no. No, those laws didn't protect, nor did they prevent violent acts from occurring, or perhaps a more accurate word to use is control. Again, the answer is an emphatic and resounding no. Once again, a major anti-gun effort is underway, taking place right here in our home state of Washington, and the possibility of these latest attempts at restricting our constitutional rights have a good chance at passing. Will these new laws make us safer? Will they prevent or even convince the criminal elements in our society not to obtain and use firearms illegally? I think we all know the answer to those questions. They are also an emphatic and resounding no. I urge any lover of freedom who believes they have the right to be able to access their firearms in a heartbeat since that is about all the time one will have to defend themselves if an intruder breaks into their home intent on harming or killing them. To let their elected representatives know that not only what they are proposing is an assault on the rights of those law-abiding citizens, it is also shameful. Congressman, Congresswoman, Senator, or Governor, if HB 1387 HB 2422, 
HB 2293 or HB 2666 pass and become law, then you will have succeeded. But it will not be the kind of success you think it will. Rather, you will merely have succeeded in making millions of us law-abiding citizens into criminals because I am uncertain if they, like the true felons, will obey those laws. Thank you. Tom's dad, Ralph Myers.